Hello and welcome to Politically Incorrect Knitters. My name is Anne Pinkova, joined as always by the lovely deplorable knitter. And today we have with us not a knitter, but an expert quilter. Her name is Amanda and she is making a quilt for President Trump and the lovely Melania. So welcome, Amanda. Hi, thank you. I have to say, I don't know that I'm an expert quilter. I've seen your stuff. You're an expert quilter. <laughs> don't you're, even. You're better than either of us are. So that, that's got to count for something. <laughs> oh, although we don't quilt, so maybe it doesn't. Um, no, but her, her stuff is amazing. And um, I, I've seen a lot of it on Instagram. And you just do this as a hobby, right? You yeah, quilt because it, you love it? Yeah, I just quilt because I love it just and it's a little bit of um well I I often use the hashtag quilting is my therapy because um I really needed to find uh something that brought joy and prettiness into my life due to my job many many years ago and um I tried actually quite a few things but then I just landed on quilting and ever since then and it's been over 10 years now that yeah every night I sew and I just love it. It's really cool. I, um, two episodes ago, I was explaining that I used to make wedding gowns. And so I really, really, really don't like to sew. Brides can ruin that for you. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's cool though, that you um, started doing that. And if you check out her Instagram, which I'll put a link to in the bottom, um, there's an article about a quilt that you made for a judge when he retired. And that was really interesting. Um, have you done a lot of things like that? Or was that the first time you decided to like take someone's stories and put them onto a quilt? So I had only been quilting uh, for a short period of time before this happened. I had been with this particular judge for 13 or 14 years at this point. And he was I'm a court reporter and he was well known for his jury void ire, just taking a lot longer than most judges, which is, you know, could be a negative thing, but the reason it was so long, he told lots of kind of stories to illustrate the matters of law that he was trying to impart to the jurors, to the prospective jurors. And anyway, I, he was just the sweetest man in the world. He was like a second father to me. And he was talking about retiring. And like I said, I hadn't been quilting long at all. So, but I was just really on fire and I would get these images in my head of things, you know, like just create it, creativity. And I was thinking, what am I going to get him for a retirement gift? I want to do something special. And he was telling one particular story during Joy, Joy of Dyer, which I had done taken, you know, I take it word for word for word. So I had heard this jury void dyer literally hundreds of times over the matter of years. And, you know, it could be very boring, but I had images in my head of what these little stories, you know, what the people look like or what the situation looked like. And so he was telling us one story that has to do with a little boy who um, is basically taking a donut off the kitchen table after his mother told him not to. And the, the matter of law is whether hinges on whether she's looking through the window or not. And I all of a sudden got in my mind, I know how I could piece together pieces of fabric to look like a window and a table and a donut. And so I thought I'll make him like the, a little picture uh, out of fabric of this one story, make it a pillow. Well, no, I made that and I got the fire and I started being able to see all his stories as pictures, as quilt blocks in my mind. And I had no plan. Um, it's kind of good I hadn't been quilting for long because I didn't know that there were techniques that I should be terrified of doing or trying. <laughs> like you're not supposed to um, try or they would be very hard. I just was trying to make this thing come to life and it just went and <laughs> it got so huge. I ended up calling the quilt the Great Jury Boy Dyer and it was surrounded in the border by 18 chairs to represent the 18 people we would question at a time. And I let all the court staff and attorneys and other judges sign the back of it for him. And yeah, he, it brought him to tears, actually. <laughs> it was really sweet. And I was very glad he got some recognition for it because someone called the local newspaper and because of the quilt interviewed him. So I was really happy to see that he got a little recognition for all his years of service. He deserved it. 
That's really cool. And um, it's funny because when often when I design something, that's how it starts for me. I will see it in my brain and then I will have to figure out how to make it work for knitting. And mm -hmm. uh, and it's that's really cool. But it, it's neat that you were able to take all of his different stories and make them into something that's like super special for him specifically. Um, so we invited you. Not, not that that's not a very cool thing, but we invited you specifically mm -hmm. because somebody sent you, sent me your link saying, hey, did you see her? She is going to make a Trump, a, a, a quilt for Melania and President Trump. And so why did you decide to start that? Like what, what gave you the idea? Was there a spark or? Yes. Well, um, honestly, all throughout I, oh, I can't really say how far it went back, but somewhere before even the election, I started just being very dismayed at um, the way he was being censored and the, the, the way the media was portraying him. I felt it was very unfair, both from the standpoint of this is our president of the United States, show some respect, but also because I truly feel that he's a president for the people. I feel like he might be the first president for the people in a very, very, very long time. And um, I feel like there's a lot of people out there who do respect and love him and, and, and are very grateful for the sacrifices and service he's given to this country so far and hope that it will continue. And I was just dismayed to see, uh, you know, actually it started with Melania first. I started feeling more for Melania first that I was like, why are they attacking her and being mean? Like she is the dream immigrant, you know, she came over here the right way. She speaks all these languages. She's so accomplished. She's so poised and classy. How could you even think about giving her a hard time? And I was just ashamed. And as time went by of how people were treating her and as time went by, my heart just went out more and more thinking, how much more can this man take? How much more can these people take of just being so um, ostracized just for doing the right thing, just because they don't fit the mold of what politics has become? We said we didn't want a politician. He came along and he's doing the job as an outsider and he's getting treated so poorly for it. And I just wanted to say, thank you. I just wanted to say, thank you. So I started writing a card and, um, but it was just going to be for me. And I thought, you know, I'm like one person who cares that, you know, I have this emotional reaction. So I thought, well, maybe I should send this card out to people and, you know, write something more general and have more people sign it. I'm like, what's another piece of paper? Well, what do I do? I quilt. And so of course I had like this heart of wanting to, um, of wanting to make them a quilt and give them a quilt. But I mean, I haven't seen it, but I'm sure they've been given millions of quilts. I mean, I'm assuming they get like lots of gifts and stuff. So I thought, well, what, you know, I put the two together. I wanted to send them messages of thanks and appreciation and I wanted to do it on a quilt. And so what I'm doing is I'm, it'll have, it'll be made up of flags and the messages will be in the white stripes. And I'm just hoping to get lots of messages because the whole, uh, the whole meaning of this quilt is behind getting a lot of messages from people that do support them and who do care about them and, and want to say whatever, thank you, or we support you or whatever it is obviously only nice messages um and <laughs> i couldn't believe no i had in compliments <laughs> yeah i kind of couldn't believe i had to include that sentence to <laughs> when i made the first post but i did and, really uh, did people really send you things that weren't kind well, I just put it in myself in the very first post, I think, just, okay. just because I knew, you know, I typically right. keep my Instagram almost entirely about quilting and my grandson, and then my Facebook gets pretty political, but um, I've seen other people on Instagram start to get a little bit political, and uh, I mean, we all know there's a big division in our country between uh, you love Trump or you hate Trump. And I know sometimes people, you know, 
I just anticipated that there would be people who'd say, oh, I've got a message for him. I'll send you, you know, <laughs> that wouldn't be the kind of message I wanted. So I just want to let them know, don't waste your time. It's not going to make it in the quilt if it's not nice. <laughs> But yes, right, I right. Think this is a, a thank you quilt. So if your message isn't along those lines, then probably right. not the place for you. But thanks anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so. And I did get some um, negative feedback, you know, some people that were like, well, no, thank you. Um, okay, well, no, thank you. That's fine. Um, at least you're polite about it, <laughs> sort of. And, or, um, you know, I, I did have a couple people that wanted to just say, I don't know, I guess I shouldn't say they necessarily wanted to say anything nasty. They wanted to express that they didn't feel he was worthy or they were worthy of a thank you. Um, and you know, it's a free country. That's what we're here for. And as far as I'm concerned, President Trump, part of what he fights for, the majority of what he fights for is our freedom. So I'm not gonna go against that. I'm not gonna be part of the censorship. So I left the comments there, I didn't reply really. Um, one person who told me it wasn't proper to call them president and first lady Trump because he was no longer in office. I did make a reply saying, well, I read Emily post and this is why it's okay for me to, you know, use those titles <laughs> still. Um, but other than that, I just didn't reply. I just left them there and the other people replied to them. <laughs> yeah. When I get negativity on my Instagram, especially, I find that I, I don't need to reply because either my followers will or they will point out how unnecessary whatever people are saying is. And, and you don't really need to get into it. So that's a nice little bonus. Exactly. You don't have to get into the argument. <laughs> exactly. I'm just here to make a quilt. <laughs> have you had a lot of uh, messages sent to you? <laughs> um. Well, it depends on what you call a lot. I've had, I initially had more than a hundred people reply that they wanted to participate. So far I've gotten um, 72 messages. So um, I'm still hoping for more. because I was actually hoping to double the initial hundred. And um, I did send out reminders to everybody that had initially replied. And most of them were like, oh, you know, thank you for letting me know, I'll get it to you. And, and did get me their messages. Um, I have a feeling though, I've reached out to a few friends and asked, and it seems like maybe my post, the, the, the posts that say Trump quilt in them, like people aren't seeing them as much as they see my other posts. So I'm oh. thinking it might not be, I don't know. I can't say for sure, but that's what it <laughs> seems like. So, um, I'm hoping that algorithm. Out. Yeah. Yeah. It's working yeah. against you. I think so. So I'm going to extend the deadline to May 1st and hope that more people get the message out there to get more messages to them. Mm -hmm. But um, even if we, I don't get any more messages, it's going to be a nice gesture. But the more messages, the nicer the gesture. Right. Right. And I'll um, happily share your post too about it so that more people can see them, as oh. I assume Anne will, right? Exactly. <laughs> Let me put you on the spot, Anne. You're going to do it too, aren't you? <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> and people can either just DM me and tell me like, this is what I want my message to be. And because I have um, a sewing machine that does fonts. So I will, you know, do the embroidery for them. Or if you want to make your own label, if I mean, if you want to make your own, you know, hand embroider it or do it in pen or whatever, then um, it the strip of fabric needs to be at least two and a half inches high and then your writing would go you know this way and no more than say uh 15 inches across and i know i i originally said four inches um but it can go longer now because i redesigned the quilt so that it can we, it can accommodate longer messages that's cool so you've designed this quilt it's going to be flags are you using like different kinds of American flags or different fabrics or how is it going to be? Um, you want to see? You know what I mean? Have... Like, yeah, if you have it. <laughs> so I'm not real great with this whole, oh, right, right now you're seeing my grandson's dinosaur quilt. So here is kind of sort of my design. Very basic, just a uh, an American flag. And so okay. um, the white stripes is 
where the um, messages will go. I'm using uh, Modus. It, this is by Moda. It's called um, American Gatherings. And let me see if I can find a selvage to, let's see. Okay, primitive. it's by Primitive Gatherings. And, oh, the selvage says, my heart bleeds red, white, and blue. So there's like this little, kind of the presidential seal on some of it. There's some of the reds. Oh, wow. Here's, um, so here's some of the reds. There's like little star fireworks and then an old glory text print and little stars and stars and stripes and a different colorway of stars little floral and some little confetti. And then all those same prints are also done in the white and the blue. So I'm trying to- Okay, so are you embroidering on plain white or are you embroidering yes. on the print? So I'm embroidering okay. on plain white and here is, if I can do this, some of the embroidering that I've already started, some of the strips. And so what I will do is the strips aren't gonna be just one long strip of fabric. It's gonna be kind of scrappy. So like mm -hmm. at the end of a message, then I'll have, there'll be scrappy stripes. Um, even the red will be scrappy. So it won't just be like one long stripe of one fabric. I'll cut them into different um, lengths and then sew them back together. So it will be a scrappy look. So then the messages will be the white, you know, on the messages on the plain white. And then there'll be like the other whites that um, were low volume with the little designs on them. There'll be of various lengths, those in there. Too. Okay, so the, the the reds and the whites you showed us, and then is the blue also gonna be a big scrappy part or is it one piece with stars embroidered or have you? So I, I have a couple, questions? <laughs> yeah, no, um, the, I have a couple different ideas for the blue that really depends on the messages that I get. Um, so if I get a lot, and I might do all of the, um, the blue parts differently on each flag, I might. So, cause there's so many great, very traditional, like, you know, from the beginning of our country's inception, different star quilt blocks. And I would just love to include as many of those as possible. So um, now none of them are going to have, you know, like all of our stars representing all the states. Um, um, it's just too small of an area to do that many for me. Um, it, it would just take me forever. And then they would get their quilt. I don't know if <laughs> they would still be alive by the time I got it done. <laughs> but um, so I'll probably, uh, it, you know, if I get, is certain messages that will fit into certain design stars. I might be putting messages into star white stars against the blue background as well. Um, and if not, if all of the messages fit within the stripes, then I'm probably going to do, you know, certain stars that are very traditional to America, um, just against the in white against the blue background. Does that make That's sense? Cool. Yeah. And, um, okay. Are you, what's your time frame for this? When do you hope to have it done? I would love to send it to them, have it in the mail in time for it to arrive by the 4th of July. I would wow. love to do that. So I'm thinking if I extend the timeline to May 1st, if I work on it all of May, and I do so every night after work and a lot on the weekends, and then get it off to a quilter who I have someone who already generously um, offered to quilt it for free. And her IG is Dixie Creek Quilting and Dixie is IE. So D-I-X-I-E Creek Quilting, no, no um, punctuation in there. Okay. And cool. so she generously offered to quilt that for free for me. So I'm hoping to get it to her, you know, within the first week of June so that then she'll have some time to get it quilted back to me. I can bind it. And if you guys have any advice for where you think I should send it, I'm intending to just send it to Mar-a-Lago and hope it gets to him. But um, if you have any other advice, I'd be interested to hear it. <laughs> 
Yeah, I don't know. I assumed, I don't know. Mar-a-Lago is where I would send it also. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some I, of our followers have a plan, right, Anne, or know something? TV. Right. Well, I know um, with the, the new website, the 45 office <laughs> that they have a uh, contact Trump there, but I think that's just like an email message. So I'm not quite sure. I'm sure that there is a place. I just haven't looked myself, so I don't know. Well, maybe I'll go to that then and email them and see if I get a response back. Like, hey. Yeah, I think that's probably the best bet because you would hate to put all the work into something and then have it just be like in limbo forever and never (laughs) get to them. That would be awful. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but, um so that's cool so i i am not a quilter and i don't know so when you say you're going to send it to this other person to be quilted what does that mean does it mean that they put the squares you put all the squares together or do they or no so i'm designing the whole quilt top so i'll try to point here you see that quilt top on my um my design wall up there so I take all the cut all the fabric into little tiny pieces and then sew it back together into a design and make it into a quilt top and that's what that is so that's just one layer and then in order to turn it into a quilt you take um some batting that's like this cotton cushy stuff a little bit and then a backing fabric you uh, usually just one solid piece of fabric um, that you use for the backing and you sew those three together and that's where you would see like if you see in movies where like um, women in the olden days or Amish women might be sitting around together and you see it like stretched out and they're, they're stitching through it they're usually quilted they're not piecing the top together like that. They're doing the quilting. They're quilting the three layers together. Um, And nowadays, you know, with computerized sewing machines, they have all kinds of amazing designs that they can quilt them. So you, it'll go with the theme of your quilt. You can pick out all these wonderful things. And I don't have a sewing machine big enough to quilt anything over, say a, a twin. And even that's really hard to get through my sewing machine. So, I send it out to a quilter and pay them and they put it on what's called a long arm machine and um, they work their magic with it. And sometimes their computer works its magic and in thread sews it together, but sews it together and usually a fun or beautiful design or both. And then when it comes back, the edges are still raw. So like um, all around the edge, it's that top piece, the batting and the the backing and so I take another piece of fabric and finish it all the way around the edge so that it's a finished edge instead of not finished edge that's cool I um I don't know that much about quilting I it's not something that I've ever gotten into but I actually know a lot of my followers do that also so they probably know more than we do (laughs) than I do but yeah I know quite a few quilters that do also knit. Um, I learned how to knit when I was a little girl, but now knitting or crocheting, if I try at all, my hands start hurting almost immediately. And it might be because I'm a court reporter and I just use my hands and my wrists too much. So maybe that's why quilting worked out for me, but I was looking at some of you, your knitting designs as well. It sure looks like fun. It is, but... Well, I definitely look over and admire too. I mean, the dinosaurs behind you I, and, you know, other things that you've done, just the, the very traditional, very colorful, just neat as a pin quilts that you have. I'm, I am amazed. Oh, yeah. thank you. It, it's amazing. It's, it's definitely an art because you got to be precise. Anne and I talk about it all the time. So I'm the kind of knitter where if something doesn't quite work out, I just fudge it. And I'm like, oh, that's close enough. When people make the pattern, it'll be fine. And is the kind of knitter where she has to make it perfect before she'll allow anyone else to knit it. And mm-hmm. so- um, And that takes four and five times. <laughs> so right, right. there's I mean, like a stack of there. So. And, and so probably Anne would be better suited to quilting than I would be because I'd be like, 
yeah, that corner is not quite tight, but it's fine. It'll <laughs> my stuff would never turn out quite perfect like that with all the nice, you know, oh, creases and edges. And we have our fudging techniques too. <laughs> I'm sure, but I um, I'm not that kind of person where I would be like, oh, this piece got cut out wrong. I gotta go recut it. I'd be like, mm, I could probably just make it work, and mine would never turn out quite quite right. Right, Anne. <laughs> Hey, I see for me I'm looking at it I'm like the math aspect must be pretty you have probably have to be very very good with getting your numbers right the whole way through and the different angles and geometry in there yeah so <laughs> and I hate math I absolutely hate math so <laughs> there's so many times I... like you're gonna calm down and then you didn't know how much math there is involved you're like so oh. I am like, why am I a quilter? I hate math, but that's why we have all those brilliant pattern writers out there. So I don't have to do too much math. And then of course, there's all these like great little books and stuff with little charts to tell you, you know, how much, whatever backing fabric you need for a particular size quilt or, you know, a million other things. But um, yeah, I, I sometimes wonder like, how did I get myself into this with all this math? <laughs> anything crazy going on in the quilt world anything crazy yeah. going on in the is quilt it, is world is it woke like knitting knitting got real woke um i have seen some woke people i wonder sometimes if like instagram well i was gonna say i want i i know for sure like tiktok shows me the kinds of things i want to see which i really actually don't like because i need to know what the left is saying to be able to understand what's going on in the world, you know? Um, and right. Facebook too, I feel like they show me more of what they already know, I think, which, is, so I don't care. I've gotten more away from that. I don't know if Instagram is doing the same thing or not. I feel like a lot of quilters, from what I see, most of the quilters I'm seeing are fairly, like, not getting too terribly political because we really draw off of each other a lot. I don't know about the knitting community, but the quilting community, like I, I never took a class in quilting. Like I learned everything I learned from watching YouTube videos and from other people on Instagram. And so I know I, I even typically keep my page very much only about quilting. I don't need to know someone's political belief to, you know, learn from them and applique technique or something, you know, but, um, there have been some there. Yeah. There have been some that have gotten very, um, political. I see more, you know, and so maybe they're not doing that with the algorithm. I don't know, because I have seen the ones that I've seen that have been very vocal have been very left. So, um, but then again, maybe that just means there's a million more of them out there and I'm just seeing a small portion. I have no idea what's going on with these algorithms, but <laughs> um, yeah, there are some and I just don't understand it. I guess that's my bottom line. You'd have to ask me another question because it's, it's so complex and so there's so many aspects to everything that it's just, it's overwhelming. Yeah, we, we had people that, you know, would stop using certain sewing machines because they felt that companies weren't anti-racist enough or um, people have stopped selling certain patterns because they, you know, maybe had a Japanese, maybe they were a Japanese design and, oh, well, I'm culturally appropriating now. Oh, so now, you know, none of us can appreciate that artwork because we're white I guess I, I don't know and I've seen a little bit from uh Japanese quilting world traditional Japanese quilts are incredible and they also like the sort of you know quote western prints that they come out with in Japan just the mm -hmm. most amazing florals and we and you, they might be <laughs> you know, like, oh, well, this is traditionally, this would be an American floral, but they take it and it's just the brightest colors and just beautiful, beautiful stuff that they produce. And it's not, we don't think anything about it when Japan is doing like a Union Jack print or an American flag print or anything like that. Right. We're just like, yeah, cool. That's fine. 
But if we flip around and it's like, oh no, we can't do it because that's traditionally Japanese. And it's like, no, we should well, all play and quilt together. And I haven't seen anyone Japanese saying that. I'm right. only seeing white people. And, and I don't know, my view is if you think you're doing something wrong mm -hmm. and it, 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 so you decide to stop doing it, if you're going to stop doing it because you really think it was something wrong and it was hurting someone else, then just stop doing it. But when you have to write, you know, this long diatribe, I feel like it's a little bit more about trying to prove something, you know, that about yourself. And it's not really about respecting the culture. That's just my view. And I just think it's beautiful when different cultures come together, like either way, whether it's, you know, Americans putting a Western bend on Japanese designs or Japanese putting a Japanese bend on Western designs, but like we can make such beautiful, beautiful designs that way. And then all appreciate each other instead of, I, I, I just don't get this idea of that separating from each other is somehow making us less racist. It's, it, it, it's, I think it's making the problem a whole lot worse, but that's just my opinion. Yeah. No, I agree. And, and from what you're saying, it does sound, it doesn't sound like it's as rampant as it is in the design community because we have a straight up divide. Either people follow designers like myself and Anne, or they're like on the other side. There's not a whole lot of middle ground and the leftists are so vocal and so coming out at you all the time that it's like crazy. Like it's crazy. And if you come out against them at all, they're canceling you, even though they say it's not canceling, they're educating you. But <laughs> whatever they're doing, it's it's so it sounds like it's um it's not as insane as the knitting has gotten. So you have something to look you forward know? to. Yeah. It sounds like it's more about the actual craft and not like the Yeah. Well, you know, I will be very interested to hear um from your followers if it's happening and I'm just not seeing it because I don't engage in it on Instagram because it's almost like different worlds for me Instagram is my quilting and Facebook is my politics and I know for a fact Facebook and TikTok use algorithms to show you what it is you're interested in and if Instagram does as well maybe it's also got an algorithm for people that just aren't getting into politics and it's not showing it to me so it, it might be happening more than I know it is I'll be interested to hear. Yeah, it, it might be a hashtag thing too, because if you follow or use certain hashtags and those aren't the popular ones with the woke crowd, then you miss a lot. So That's because true. I know a lot of people who follow me that once in a while, I'll use a hashtag that will bring all these haters to me. And it must be like, I stumbled into like a woke area that I'm not supposed to go to. So I, I wonder if that has a, a part of it. But yeah, <laughs> if you guys follow us and you quilt, tell us. Tell us if it's more woke than we know. <laughs> yeah, I'll be interested to hear. Maybe I'll try, like, I'll ask you for advice on a hashtag to use as a test to see what happens. <laughs> yeah, once in a while, I'll put out something on uh, Knitters of Instagram, I think is the one that I use that sometimes brings the haters to me. I'll put up like a Trump pattern and I'll use knitters of Instagram. And they'll be like, why am I seeing this? I'm going to unfollow you. And I'm like, but you don't follow me. <laughs> That's how <hashtags> work. <laughs> like, well, good for you, I guess. And they'll be like, well, don't put this on here. And I'll be like, but it's a free country still. So I, know, I, I am gonna. I don't get being territorial about hashtags. It's like they exist because everyone can use them. You don't have to sign in to use the hashtag. Right. <laughs> Here. <laughs> but um, I mean, I don't try to cause trouble, but sometimes trouble just happens when you don't mean to. And so if you're going to get mad at me for using the hashtag, I, you've got other issues. <laughs> <laughs> Ann and I have been on the bandwagon for what, months now about how conservatives need to start speaking up like in general, we can't, the left is so outspoken. We got to stop being scared. And so yeah. we know exactly what you mean. I had that same epiphany and 
when I came out, when, when I did, I like came out on my Facebook page <laughs> as a conservative and as a Trump supporter. And uh, yeah, it was like this big deal. <laughs> Because before that, I was like, live and let live. And then I realized we can't do that anymore. We can't for so many reasons. Yes. We're going to lose our country. Well, we're going to lose our country. And I, I, people who watch us all the time are going to get sick of me because I say the same things every time. But they, all of them get all crazy and in your face because they think that there's not that many of us. And so as long as we're all kind of quiet and in the background, they're going to keep doing it. And so we all have to. I don't think we need to be crazy. I don't think we need to like be shouting people down or whatever, but I also think that we need to start being like, Hey, here I am What's going on, yeah. you know? Right. Yeah. And also something I've been thinking of this week is the sort of Rosa Parks method. Um, my, we were talking this week within my family about um, an event that was coming up and they're like, Oh, do you think they're going to be like, you think after a certain time, people are going to be like, I'm sorry, you don't have a vaccine. You can't come in. I'm like, but what if we show up anyways? What if we're like, I'm sorry, you have, you have to physically kick me out now. You have to tell me to my face. I can't just be like, well, I won't go. Like you have to tell me to my face. I can't come in Mm -hmm. because I'm not vaccinated Mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm not going to be rude, but I may be a little loud. I might, you know, not the quiet voice. Oh, well, you're kicking me out. You're kicking me out. Really? Again, not in a super, but so enough that people know what's going on around you. Yes. This is not something that is quiet in a corner that this is, you know, and again, you know, your own judgment for every occasion, but the, oh, uh, you, you are physically saying that I can't come in. You're saying this to my face, not just hanging a sign and I walk past it. That, that is a, that is a thing to consider as we go forward. I think. I think you're right. And there's, um, a movement I've seen, I haven't seen a bunch of it, but that the country should all find together, come together and, and unmask on May 1st. So May 1st, throw out your mask and make sure you have your um, message and to Amanda for the quilt. May 1st is the day. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, the point is, is that it's time. It's time to stop complying with these things. Make them say it to you. Make, show people you aren't scared because if more people who are kind of questioning things see that other people aren't scared, then we're all gonna, we're all gonna start doing it. Mm-hmm. It's easier to do something when you're not the only one standing there. So for sure. <clears throat> I, the first time I went into Joanne's without a mask just a couple weeks ago, um, because I decided the same thing, you know, and I, I'm going to, I mean, it, it, it is a private business and they can say whatever they want, but I just decided that instead of just following the sign, I'm going to go in and uh, if they tell me I have to wear it to come in, then I'll decide do I want to go in badly enough or, um, and well, and also I'm having this issue. Remember I told you, um, after completely recovering for COVID now, suddenly I have this awful smell in my nose and it is amplified by wearing a mask. Like I, I want to be physically sick when I put my mask on, which I have to do it to some extent at work. I'm sorry. Officially I wear my mask 100% of the time at work, but (laughs) Um, you know, when I'm out, out, it's like, why do I need to make myself basically gag just to go into a store? So I decided I was going to give it a shot. And, um, I, I went into Joanne's and there was a lady there standing there with a hand sanitizer. And, um, I don't mean to throw anybody under the bus or anybody, but I just appreciate the fact that she offered it to me. I said, no, thank you. And went about my way. And, um, as I was in the store, I saw other customers all had masks on and I did almost kind of feel like a criminal, you know, but then I ran into another gal who didn't have a mask on and we just looked at each other and like smiled and we're just so relieved. And she came over and she hugged me. I mean, it's just cause we're not wearing masks, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I think about how we used to take our freedom so for granted. And now We appreciate it so much when we grab, but we have to grab it. We have to grab our freedom. They're not just going to hand it back to us. They're not. And, and I think that like Anne said, it's, we, 
you don't need to be rude and you don't need to make a humongous crazy scene but also kind of it's time to push back it's yeah. time to not just stand there and be like okay I'm gonna wear my mask and I'm gonna and I gotta admit I'm scared to do it because I don't I you, you've seen the videos of the people and I live in New York where people tend to be a little bit on the hot-headed crazy side and so I'm a little bit scared of being like going into my Walmart or my grocery store and, and not wearing one because I don't really want to deal with that. I just want to go and do what I have to do and come home. But if we all just keep complying, they're going to expect us to. And it's, it's getting old. Well, and it's getting worse. They're going to want to take more and more. From a positive angle, I mean, you talked about the other lady um, in the store who wasn't wearing mask and it was instant, you know, connection. But um, when when you do take stands like this, um, there is like, you never know, you know, once you, you know, you said also come out of as conservative or, you know, come out as, you know, I'm against masks or come out against anything else that you never know who will be your friends and who will be your enemies, that mm -hmm. people you thought were cool will suddenly be against you and people who you never, I don't know, maybe you didn't, you were just barely acquaintances or random strangers or people you talk to are suddenly your new best friends. And it's the, the whole, your relationships change, but I don't know, like it becomes stronger that you're they're based on something that we both have the same principal background it's not yeah. just an acquaintance thing anymore so yes yeah. i've noticed that happening so much and at first i was just dismayed to find that people that i had thought were just friendly and you yeah. know i thought there was something there but it was only based on you know kind of running into each other every day and we're friendly and I work with you, whatever. And then when all this happened, I realized that, you know, some of these people are basically at their core people that I don't want to have a conversation with. Um, and I don't mean that to say that they are bad people or anything like that. I pray for them um, for many different reasons. Um, and I still care about them, but I don't want to have a conversation while they're in that state of mind. If there's, if there's no hope of an open dialogue and changing any minds. But then as time went on, I found that it, like you're saying, it was true the other way as well, that people that I hadn't really, you know, talked to much at all, we have very basic core principles in common and those have turned out to be deeper friendships than I would have ever dreamed. So, you know, God's at work in everything. That's for sure. Right. Definitely. That's very true. And it, it's scary. It is scary to know that somebody that you've known forever and been friends with is might, might decide that they just like you because you like the bill of rights and you think you shouldn't have to wear a muzzle when you go out to the store and that's upsetting and it's hard to deal with but I think that it's so true that you're gonna find new people I mean if I wasn't who I am I never would have talked to Anne, who is now like my BFF because wow we do this together cool. you know what I mean right. but it's because we both are conservative designers that we started talking and so if I hadn't Stood up and done it and she hadn't then we wouldn't even be, here be right in our now. separate bubbles and not even know That's right so and awesome. so right but it's it's um it's scary because you know people are gonna think things about you and call you names or or decide they don't like you and that's upsetting but you get cool stuff out of it too so it's it's kind of uh gotta decide what's the what's more important to you like real true friendships or keeping surfaces nice and neat so that everybody gets along i don't know mm -hmm. coming to the point where it's gotta well know, and gotta and change. now it's it's even worse with the vaccinations i am starting to feel sometimes like people who <clears throat> you know people who believe that the vaccination is truly a vaccination and who are you know gung-ho about getting it and i'm not talking about <clears throat> you know, people in high risk categories. I'm talking about your everyday, like 30 year old person 
who's in perfectly good physical health that has absolutely almost zero chance of, you know, dying of COVID. Um, <clears throat> they, they see those of us who aren't willing to take the risk with the vaccine as like dirty or second class or something. And that's another way that, you know, the division is, it's coming down. And we have to remember and stay strong in our principles and not give in to, you know, social peer pressure and fear. Because once we know, right, we can't unsee what we've now seen. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, kind of the full circle back to Trump and the support of him. I think now that we've had him as a president, that's part of why the divide is so big because people have had their eyes open. Now that we've had President Trump and seen what's going on in the background and what's happening, those of us who were red-pilled or woke up or whatever, you can't go back to just thinking, oh, all this, this, uh, all the wars and all the tension and everything is normal and okay and just how it's got to be. Right. And now we've seen. And, you know, how many rhino Republicans just hated Trump because they said for years, oh, yes, we will, we will get those conservative principles done and we're going to lower your taxes and get rid of regulations and you know do all these good sensible things move the um israeli the american embassy to jerusalem and we're going to get all of this done and send money to sendmoneynow.com and join our uh, super PAC and everything else and just just keep on sending that cash and then what did they do nothing and then you're like oh well you know the the wheels of the law they grind finally and like well these things take time and look how much trump, in the immediate change and the immediate action that trump was able to take suddenly you have a man of energy in the job willing to get stuff done and did he and he didn't do everything but the amount that he did do compared to his republican predecessors was just incredible and now we're sitting here like, oh, I was like, ooh, 2024. Do you think old Mitt Romney's going to do another run? <laughs> and like, no, nobody wants, well, there's very few people, I guess, that would go for that sort of thing. But like, it's not the main Republican base are like, no, 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 I've had the good stuff now, thanks. I don't want any of your cheap peddling off brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't want your imitation anymore. It's, it's not going <laughs> right. to cut it. <laughs> that's a great way to put it uh -huh. <clears throat> I, I i think that it, it's it's like the masks and it's like the now that we've seen the truth we know what can happen you can't go back to how it was and we need to start applying that to our lives in general even though it's kind of scary even though it's really scary because i still wear my mask all the time when i go out because i just don't want to argue with people i just want to do what i have to do and go home but mm -hmm. It, it, but you never know. People might not argue with you. You know, right. they might not. You never know. And no one says you have to fight it every time either. You know, if someone comes at you a little bit more assertive, you know, if you have your mask off and someone comes at you in a way that you don't want to deal with it, you don't have to argue your point. You can't just say, "Oops, sorry," and stick it on. You know, right. you don't have right. to be the the justice warrior at every single moment just do your best and you never know who we're going to find that agrees with us and how you might motivate them. You never know. They might be coming at you to say, to hug me like that lady in Joanne's. Right. <laughs> very cool. Very true. Say thanks oh, okay. for joining us. We appreciate you coming on so much. Thank you for having me. It was really nice. Oh, and remember to check out Amanda on her Instagram page. Um, we'll put a link below and to get your messages in for her quilt by May 1st. And there you go. Like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you, everyone.